Hello everyone, welcome to this uh, video courses uh, that will be ab about uh, Sheban and Koslav. Uh, so first let me introduce myself. I am Adrian Demute, so I'm a French Grandmaster around 2500 and so I play chess since I'm a kid and I am now both um, I'm a chess player, uh, I'm a chess trainer for quite some years. I also train the French national team and French youth national teams. So I'm, I'm really into coaching uh, recently. I have already also written a couple of books at Thinkers Publishing that you might be aware of already. And so with these video courses, I'm going to show you um, how to get a complete repertoire with black uh, on the Slav Chebanenko, so, um, so against uh, the move d4, and after once you play d5, c4, you play c6. So this is a starting position of these video courses. I won't really cover um, the, the English variation or the Reti variation. I will talk about uh, about move orders in in the conclusion, but I'm not uh, going to analyze it. So we start uh, from this position. So it's not yet the Shevanenko variation. If you don't know the Shevanenko line, um, I will first uh, start by showing you what it is. So it's for example on move four after knight c3. Uh, this is a choice by, by black to play the move a7, a6 already. Uh, so it may look as a kind of strong, strange move for black, but it actually contains a few ideas, uh, of course linked with the move b7, b5. So it can be uh, b5 on the next move, or it can be uh, a threat later when you take on c4. So of course, if if White's not playing anything like stopping D takes C4, then it will probably be an option for Black. So there are a lot of variation where we will have looked at D takes C4. Also, other where we can play B5, and then other where we can play none of them, none of these two possibilities. So it really depends on on White on what White is doing. But before uh, coming to the Shabanenko, we will have a look at very different variations. So I will just first um, kind of make um, a summarize up of uh, every variation you may encounter, and I will try to do it uh, in the order where you can find the videos. So actually, in the first video, so after the introduction video that we are doing, uh, I will have a look at the sidelines for white already on move three. So I don't mean um, I'm not thinking of uh, the exchange slab variation. This will come in the second video. I didn't want to start with uh, the, let's say the most solid variation for white. Not the most appealing at first sight for for black, of course. So uh, in the sidelines, I'm mainly covering the move e2 e3, which doesn't necessarily lead to a sideline. But after knight f6, my main line of the sideline with will be the move bishop to d3. So of course, the moves like knight c3 or or knight to f3 were coming back to other variation that you are we are going to follow to. To follow later, but uh, in this first video we will focus on bishop d3. After what my recommendation is to go for the immediate central reaction e7 e5, so intending e4, and we will see that in case of d takes e5, it's very important that we have the intermediate move d takes e4, which makes uh, which puts white in quite uh, a difficult position. So next we have to focus on, on which is not really a sign line but the exchange variation has been played many times not only by players who want to make a draw recently some players are playing the 
the exchange variation to play for a win so it's more in this uh, sense that I decided to treat the video uh, I, I, I've been looking mainly at variations where white were quite ambitious so for example uh, the, move, the more order with bishop f4 is may, probably the best one as I will explain and of course uh, to be more concise and to keep as less variation as possible I have decided here to follow uh, the, the spirit of, of the Shabanyenko Slav by playing a7, a6 so that if um, white has taken on, on move 5 only when we play a, a6 on move 4 uh, then we can merely transpose in these variations so I, ha I had preferred to cover lines with a6 not to do everything twice with different variations also of course at some point but a bit a little bit later we will have a look at the move order knight c3 which is not the most common one because we give white give black the possibility of taking on c4 leading, leading to completely different play but it's definitely not uh, black's main line. I think there is some tr drawbacks of taking on c4, but still it's not the most usual move for black for white because uh, black has the possibility of taking and, and there is no not so often uh, a reason to let this happen for for black. So anyway, we will start with knight f6. We won't take on c4, and after e3, of course, we will go for a6. So here the move knight f3 will be uh, two of our main uh, chapters. Uh, it will be the chapters 17 and 18 of these video courses. So this is clearly the main line, but uh, at first we will just have a look at moves like queen c2 or bishop to to d3, moves like uh, that are stopping the move bishop to f5. And that also makes the move bishop g4 quite a bit strange because there is no knight on, on f3 to pin. So the move bishop g4 would be quite strange to me. So we will focus on, on the move g6. So this will be for, for, for video number 7 I believe. Uh, also after knight f3 there is a lot, lot more uh, so sideline here. So white, white has many possibilities, for example we will have a look at g3 um, or first time knight bd2 uh, after what there is a, uh, a hidden tra trap after knight to h4 uh, the good move is to come back to e6 but we will see that after bishop g6 um, white has very nasty possibility of playing queen to b3 Intending queen after queen b6, queen to h3, and there are two threats. There is a queen, the threat queen to c8, uh, forcing queen d8 and taking on b7, winning at least two pawns. And there is a threat of taking on g6, and after f takes there is, oh sorry, f takes is forced because h, h, h takes is of course uh, impossible. And of course, f takes g6 is very ugly move. So all this means um, that uh, after this knight h4 we will come back to e6, much better. Also after the move g3 uh, we don't necessarily want to take on c4, the pawn is not uh, protected on c4 but still there, there could be some problems but instead we can start with bishop g4 and play with e6 a, a bit like in the spirit of the semi-slav or or some variation like this, or a bit like a London system with reverse color. It's very solid for black, of course. And white has some trouble in in having the, the better position in these middle games. Also, there is uh, one of the main sidelines, which is to go queen c2 or queen to b3. So for us, it won't really make a difference because we I have decided to show you d takes c4. So there is an extra possibility here for white that is uh, that he can go uh, with e4. Uh, so it's a new, it's another possibility comparing to to queen to b3. But still, instead of this pawn gambit, uh, the most usual move is queen takes c4. After what I have decided to go for bishop to f5. 
So again, right now I'm trying just to show you uh, every line so that if you want to get directly go to a video, you, you know where to find it and, and you know what I'm going to analyze it. Uh, so after e3 this is also main line so again after a6 it's, we uh, we already talked about the same position with the knight on c3 and the knight on g1 so it's more or less the same we won't have a look at knight c3 we will only look at moves like queen c2 or bishop d3 the slow moves I am intending to for example prevent the move bishop to f5 and only then will come the main line of playing knight c3 and at the a6 there are many many possibilities for white uh, he can take on d5 as I mentioned uh, already uh, talking about uh, the, um, the exchange slabs this is a possible transposition the only difference is that white had to go with the move knight f3 which is not really the most ambitious move so as to e3, the, the main problem for white is that the knight can be pinned, so we have a good development move with the bishop. So then we will have a look at the move like queen c2, uh, where of course we will go for d c4, there is no reason to refrain from playing this move. Uh, the same goes for moves like bishop f4, because after d c4 there is uh, the possibility to bring the knight on d5 with a tempo on the bishop. And there is also the possibility of going b5 and possibly b4 next. So some good uh, possibilities for black. The move bishop g5 will be quite similar after knight e4 and knight takes d takes e4. Again, we we take a bishop. We we can't go with knight d5, but we have already taken on c3. So it's slightly different, but it's more or less. Uh, similar to the line I just talked about with bishop f4 um, then there will be the strange looking move knight to e5 a very very weird looking move because uh, white is moving his knight again so it may appear to be quite unlogical for for white but it contains some idea for example the idea is to have the pawn on, C, on c4 protected so that white can simply follow with the move bishop f4 and white has the time to go for bishop f4 without having to lose the pawn on c4 uh, then the variations with um, g3 will come uh, so this time the reaction with b5 is very logical much more than bishop g4 since the knight is on c3 and possibly a target for b pawn um, then there will be three videos about the move a2 a4 which is uh, the third main move here behind e3 and c5 uh, the point is uh, white is stopping the idea of, of going b7 b5 with black so instead I would prefer I would rather go uh, with e6 and the position will be more similar to the um, semi slavs than the Slav Shevanenko now because this is a semi slav where white and black have included the moves a4, a6 and we will try to prove that it's more in, in black's advantage so for example the move e3 or, or bishop to g5 will be the main move here for white also g3 will be analyzed so there will be three videos about these three moves then we start with the move e3 where black has many options but I have decided to go for the move the immediate reaction of, of going b5 after one after what in, in the first video about about the b5 I will uh, have a look at c takes d5 and at b3 is a very logical move and only then in the second video I will push on c5 and we will have a look at very different um, and a lot of of um, middle games position where blacks manage to go e5 a very important central reaction once uh, white is playing c5 and the same goes for the main line and the 19th video uh, which is a move c5 immediately 
not uh, playing e3 b5 but um, b5 wasn't so useful for black necessarily but then also uh, the difference is that white can still develop his bishop on f4 so we can take it as an advantage and our main line will go with g6 and after h3 simply go for some development like knight bd7 and then bring the knight to, seven, to c7 and only then try to open the center with e5 this is going to be our main system here so that's it uh, we have finished the tour uh, that uh, we uh, have of what we are going to see in the Shebanenko Slav so I hope you are going to enjoy these videos I have uh, been trying to to talk as as long as I as I could uh, to explain the moves and so on. So I hope it will be easy to understand and to follow. So good luck with this video courses. Thank you.